Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming to the celebration of life for Sheree, Ram, Kalidini, and Martin Flores. I am the Dean of Students, Ophelia Rowe Allen. Both students were in their graduate programs, business analytics, and industrial and organizational psychology programs. Today, we have incorporated some of the students' religious and cultural traditions in the program. Again, we would like to thank the many friends, the families that are present here today, um, for Martin Flores and Friends of Cherie and others. And also for the Charger community, thank you for joining us in person and those that are online watching. And now I welcome our interim president, Dr. Zinger, for the opening remarks. Thank you, Ophelia, and welcome to everyone, especially the parents of Martin. We'd like to acknowledge your being here, and, and thank you so much for joining us. At a time like this, there simply aren't words to suffice and to comfort at the level that I'd like to. There will be individuals that will speak to you that are far more learned and prepared than me to be able to do that. But at this moment, I'd just like to share a couple of thoughts from the heart, and one is, in the year 2023, I think we've all learned, regardless of our faith backgrounds or philosophical backgrounds or whatnot, I think we've all learned and agree that you lean into the sadness, you embrace the sadness, and you push through it, and, and that's the beginning of, of recovery. And it's far too soon to even be talking about recovery as we go through this time of grief. And the second thing I'd share with you is very, very personal, and I never thought I'd be in a position where I would share this as often as I do now. But when I was the age of many of our students, I lost my older brother, um, who was the age of these two young men. And I remember a, a family friend and minister that stopped by the house that evening, and he shared with my parents, and I watched from a distance, that one day these memories would become bittersweet. And I remember when I heard that term, I was kind of angry. How dare you be, even be talking about something like that so quickly? And yet, as the years and decades have passed, he could not have been more correct in his sentiment. I assure you, the memories will always be better of how their lives ended. But your memories will become sweet. Please embrace those. The hole will always be in your heart. That never heals. But the memories will be better sweet, and there'll be better days ahead. Lean into those who love you, and we will always be here for you. Thank you. And now I invite Nicole Harry to the stage. Good afternoon and namaste everyone. My name is Nicole Harry. I'm in my last semester here at UNH and I am a practicing priestess of Sanatan Dharma or Hinduism of seven years. Today, we are brought together for a disheartening and tragic cause. We are here to commemorate the lives of Sri Ram and Martin. Sri Ram was a devotee to Sanatan Dharma, and as Hindus, we believe in moksha. Moksha is the concept that at the end of our visits here on earth, we attain salvation. We are liberated, and we are at one with the Supreme Being. We believe that although the vessel sheds its life, its vitality, the person who took up that vessel, their soul, their good deeds, lives on for an eternity. Today I have prepared a few verses of the Bhagavad Gita, our holy scriptures, and some mantras to attain said moksha. The verses follow as such. Na jayate mriyate va kadachin, 
नयम भूतवा भविता वान भूय अजो नित्य शशवतो यम पुराणो न हनवंते हनवमाने शरीरे This translates from Sanskrit meaning the soul is neither born nor does it ever die nor having one it's existed does it ever cease to be the soul is without birth eternal immortal and ageless it is not destroyed when the body itself is destroyed so this is saying that the eternal nature of the soul has been established as we can see this notion of moksha which is ever existing and beyond both birth and death consequently it is devoid of the six types of transformation its existence in the womb birth growth procreation diminution and death these are transformations of the body not of thyself what we call as death is merely the destruction of the body but the immortal self remains unaffected by all bodily changes the good deeds that dharma i spoke of earlier a man has accrued throughout his lifetime shall be known forever by him and by god and i leave you with two mantras for sri ram to attain moksha the first mantra is called the stula pankshaksha and the second is called the sukshma pankshaksha they both go as follows om namah shivaya shivaya namaha Om Namah Shivaya Shivaya Namaha Om Namah Shivaya Shivaya Namaha With the continuous chanting of these mantras Atma ko sad gati prapta ho May Sri Ram so attain moksha Om Shanti 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 May peace be upon you all Thank you Now I will ask Steve Bacaroli to come up for the reading of the verses I will be sharing some verses from 2 Corinthians and John 14 Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us all in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If there were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Now we'll have our university chaplain Martin O'Connor. The scriptural text that Nicole and Steve shared with us although they come from very different traditions they share a similar theme in that second reading that steve read from john's gospel in my father's house there are many rooms it's often translated in my father's house there are many mansions the actual greek word is it means to stay in my father's house there are many places to stay and we know that shri ram and martin one of the places they will always stay are in the hearts and minds of all of us who minister and study and live at this wonderful university and so it is in that spirit that we offer this prayer for these two young men lord your wisdom governs the length of days and we mourn the loss of martin and shri ram 
whose lives have passed so quickly, and we entrust them to your mercy. Welcome them into your heavenly dwelling, that place to stay, and grant them happiness of everlasting youth. Lord God, you are the source and destiny of our lives. In your loving providence, you gave us Sri Ram and Martin so that they could grow in wisdom and age and grace. And now you have called them to yourself. And as we grieve the loss of one so young, we seek to understand your purpose. Draw them to yourself. Give them full stature with your holy ones. And may they stand with all of the holy ones and saints who know your love and praise and your saving will. And we make our prayer today and every day to a tender and loving God. And so we say, amen. And now we'll have the tributes done by Dorothy, followed by Steve. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Dorothy Klassen, and I am the International Student Life Advisor and the Office of Graduate and International Student Life here at the University of New Haven. I want to thank you all for attending this memorial and showing your support to both our students, their friends, and their families. Sri Ram's sister, Sadhana, was kind enough to speak with me on the phone and share some of her cherished memories. She and Sri Ram grew up in Andhra Pradesh in southeast India. They attended school together through 10th grade. After school, the siblings would have a quick snack and then study together until the evenings. They took dance classes together at night. Sri Ram liked classical dances, but he aced Western and folk dances. Later, after homework, Sri Ram would often play chess with their father. Sri Ram completed grades 11 and 12 in Rajasthan while studying information technology. This is where Sri Ram discovered that he preferred cooler weather. His favorite place in the world, he later found out, was Rishikesh for the comfortable weather and peaceful, calming environment. Back in Rajasthan, Sri Ram also found out that he was not truly interested in IT. He changed his major and in May of last year completed his Bachelor of Business Administration at Christ University in Delhi. During summer breaks, Sri Ram enjoyed painting and playing badminton. He loved nice cars, motorcycles, and road trips. He was a great gymnast as well, often doing cartwheels around his sister. Sri Ram was mindful about fitness. He kept track of his daily steps and wouldn't allow him to go to sleep at night until he had reached his step goal. While carefully monitoring his activity, Sri Ram was also a big foodie. He loved dal, potato fries, chocolate, and of course, anything his mother cooked. His most favorite meal was chicken biryani, or really anything with chicken. Shanhana shared that one day, Sri Ram bought and ate an entire whole body tandoori chicken by himself. He came home saying it didn't even fill his stomach and he needed a second chicken. During meals, Sri Ram could be slightly mischievous, sneaking food from his sister's plate or tidbits directly from the serving dish instead of his own plate. Food was especially more delicious if it came from his sister's plate. Sri Ram was just one year younger than Sadhana, and she studied abroad, returning very jet-lagged for holidays and school breaks. Sri Ram would purposefully schedule his return home the day after his sister, and always first thing in the morning. He wanted to wake her up and gently taunt her to say welcome back, and it was time to start the day. Sadhana says Sri Ram was the clever and interesting sibling. He could glance at her nursing textbooks and later answer her quizzical questions easily. He joked that he could never go into medicine because it was too easy for him and he needed to give others a chance to succeed in the field. Even while avoiding the study of medicine, Sri Ram was quite accomplished. He was offered three jobs in India after completing his BBA. And instead, 
he returned home to Andhra Pradesh for eight months. Sadhana especially cherishes this time because Sri Ram and her were able to grow close again before he departed for the United States and before her uh, studies resumed abroad. The two of them were planning more quality time together with a trip to Paris this summer. Sri Ram was particularly close to his paternal grandmother. After losing his grandfather many years ago as a child, Sri Ram started to flirt with her to make her giggle, blush, and distract her from the hardship. In addition to the great love he had for his grandmother, sister, and parents, he was very fond of friends and going out with them. Most of the pictures he kept on his phone were of his friends, family, and the long-term girlfriend he dated back at home. After completing his MBA here at University of New Haven, Sri Ram had great intentions with a return home to India. His lifelong goal was to start his own business, be independent, and create hundreds of job opportunities for others. Sadhana recalls that in their last eight months together, she realized that Sri Ram had greatly matured and developed a deep care for many. He wanted others to be happy and would go out of his way to make a joke and see others smile. But most of all, she remembers her brother's smile, and she hopes that we will too. So as you leave here today, please take a breath and know that life goes on. Smile at any chance you can, live life to the very fullest, and take time to remember those who have gone before us. The UNH community sends their deepest sympathies abroad to Sadhana, Sri Ram's parents, family, and friends. We are with you. Martin de Jesus Flores was born at Yale New Haven Hospital on February 16, 1998, and was raised in Wilton, Sacramento, California. Martin has always been an A student, a saber fencer, and enjoyed karate growing up. He also served and volunteered at church. In high school, he and his best friend started a car detailing service and enjoyed working on cars. He graduated cum laude with a major in psychology from St. Mary's College of California. He returned to Connecticut to pursue a master's in industrial and organizational psychology at the University of New Haven. The VP of the consulting firm where he worked has this to say, universally across the company, our memories of him are about a kind, generous, and gentle person, smart and eager to help however he could. Martin found a community at the Bradley Street Bicycle Co-op that he fell in love with while volunteering and spending time biking. He believed in hard work, perseverance, and genuine kindness. He loved nature, music, cycling, cars, and a great cup of coffee. He didn't buy a lot of things, but when he did, it was as high quality as him, like his titanium chopsticks. He is survived by his parents, Martin Jonathan and Davina Gracia, his sisters, Joanna and Catherine Grace, and his beloved brother, Peter. He is and will always be remembered as a beautiful, fun and loving person who brought joy to everyone around him. At this time, I'm going to invite Sarabi, Bhavisha, and Pratik for the remembrance for Sri Ram. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Sarabi Nagaraj. I am the president of Indian Student Council. Uh, we are gathered here today to remember and honor the life of two students who left us too soon. We have lost someone who was not just only a student, but also bright light in our community. Though they are not no longer with us, they will always remember with, remain with us in our heart and memory. To Sri Ram and Martin's family and their loved ones, 
please know that we are they, they are not alone in the in this grief we are there with them their memory will always be cherished and they will live through the many lives they have touched rest in peace both of them good afternoon everyone i am bavisha devnani the head of diversity and inclusion at the indian student council i know it is a difficult to find words of comfort in times like this however we must hold on to the memories we shared with our friends and continue to celebrate their lives let us remember contagious smiles kind hearts and cheerful attitude towards life these memories will help us find comfort in the days like this as we say goodbye to our friends we must acknowledge the importance of supporting each other during this time with this university of new haven we have many departments and organizations on campus to support our students just like counseling and psychological services indian student council graduate student council the dean of students and the office of graduate and international student life we are here for everyone we offer comfort and love to those who are grieving in closing i want to express my deepest condolences to the families we are here for you we share your pain our friends may be gone but their spirits and memories will live on forever rest in peace dear friends you will be missed good afternoon everyone my name is pratik mansi it's with a heavy heart that welcome everyone here in the memorial service today as we all sit here in grief i would like to extend my condolences to each and every one who was affected by the loss of these lives lives full of dreams aspirations and potential if there's anyone here who would like to talk and receive support always remember that there are various offices around the campus that are here to support you let me leave you with this thought those who leave do not come back it's their memories that come back to us it's our duty to honor their potential and dreams and aspirations as well as ours thank you now we will have mo from the who is a distinguished lecturer here from the university and eric marcus another um lecturer along with the bradley street bicycle co-op thank you ophelia good afternoon i'm mo kayer You know, every profession has its tools. Plumbers have their wrenches, carpenters have their hammers, industrial organizational psychologists and human resource professionals have their box of Kleenex which somebody swiped from my podium here. Martin Flores was an aspiring industrial organizational psychology professional and what makes Losing Martin so hard is that he was so easy, so easy to like and admire. He was a joy to have in the classroom and was hungry to learn, often answering challenging IO psychology questions, making comments about relevant news items, asking insightful questions. He was highly engaged in discussions. Uh and he his moderated tone lifted our classes he would connect with his classmates always smiling it was like a permanent fixture on his face and joking around in a supportive way thank you in a supportive way to let others know that he thought i'm okay you're okay in fact he could have written that pop psychology book from 50 years ago martin was 
first in a class of mine last fall. I was teaching in the mini, uh, mini master a, uh, a day long six hour uh, day on the psychometrics of testing and assessments in the workplace. Real dry statistical technical stuff like reliability and validity and calculations of different psych uh, assessments like cognitive ability tests, structured interviews, personality inventories, employment surveys, and the like. The math can be challenging. So I happened to tell the class about how I barely passed high school algebra. I could see Martins and the rest of the class surprised. I explained that I was too busy as a weekend drag strip car racer instead of start studying algebra. I had a wayward youth and that I, had tur that I later turned around and got A's in co college calculus. The point was it's never too late to learn. As he was leaving our class, Martin says to me, I really admire your drag racing background, Dr. Mo." much more than your lecture on psychometrics. <laughs> I had just experienced one of, uh, Martin, one of my Martin moments. Breaking news, being a grad student today can be very stressful. All the assignments, due dates, readings, projects, working with teams where some people engage in what IO psychologists call social loafing, plus internship work, Yet, Martin had a knack for de-stressing people with his humor. Who wouldn't feel a bit de-stressed when he got you to laugh, which he did often? Chances are, many of you in this audience had many Martin moments together. Martin kicked, uh, kitted, uh, kitted others in a good-natured way so that people in the classroom or bike club or work uh, felt supported and cared for. Martin knew that humans are wired to connect, and this connection affects our physical and mental health. And there's abundant scientific evidence on that. Clearly, Martin did his part to improve others' well-being. Psychologists could have saved a whole bunch of money in their research if they had just talked to Martin. Acts of kindness in and out of the classroom frequently followed Martin, who would be seen helping others understand some IO psych assignment that I had botched up, and he was like my unofficial teaching assistant. Martin started an internship at, at a respected IO psych uh, consulting firm named Org Vitality while still an undergrad at St. Mary's College in California one of the partners of the firm, Scott, Scott Brooks, his wife was a professor at St. Mary's and had Martin in a class and recommended him to Org Vitality. He started in March 2020 and so was with them for three years. As CEO Jeff Saltzman says, he contributed significantly to our work and will be greatly missed. They too had many Martin moments. Jeff is here today, thank you. Martin's love of bicycling was well known. It was only a week ago when he told me that he might join a bike firm after graduating so that he could apply his emerging IO psych skills uh, in that way. Martin is an inspiration to us all and truly had so much to offer psychology which we can only now imagine. Thank you. Excuse me. In my haste, I left my notes that I had taken. I, I don't have them, but so I'll try to recreate what I what I thought about. Martin uh, uh, was in three of my classes, uh, and he never missed a class. Uh, he showed up, and he showed up early, and he showed up ready to work, and um, and that was a great thing. And we sort we bonded in one of those pre-class conversations over our love for cycling and, uh, 
and for the Bradley Street Bike Co-op, uh, which I had gotten my bike fixed there a couple of times, but Martin was much more involved. Uh, and, uh, but Martin, I don't know, he just, he left an impression, a uh, great impression, and um, I think, you know, us, all of us students, faculty in the program are suffering from his loss, uh, but I think we're all better people for having known him. Hello. <clears throat> there we go. Uh, my name is Kyle Anthony. I'm the uh, shop manager at the Bradley Street Bicycle Co-op. I wrote a lot down, and I wrote it small. <clears throat> uh, I just want to say sorry that we're all here. Uh, sorry to the Flores family. Uh, sorry to all of Martin's friends and teachers. Sorry to Shram's friends and teachers and family and who aren't here. Uh, uh, sorry to the Bradley Street Bicycle Co-op family. Love you guys. Pulling it together. Um, as terrible as it is, this is all easier because we're together. It's been easy because we've been together. It hasn't been easy. But the thing that's really hit me the last couple of days that's been extra frustrating is that Martin would have absolutely shined in the last week of our lives. Uh, we've had countless late nights and helpful strategy sessions to make sure everyone had what they needed and had rides and fun events that were sad, but he would have done very well at. And, uh, and we had Taco Bell last night. He would have loved that. Um, Martin was really good at bringing people together, and that's where this would have really come through. Um, he could turn on the energy that he had, the charm that he had, all these little things, and he'd, he'd wrestle it up from inside himself, and he could, you know, turn strangers into friends, and friends into new family members, and he was so welcoming, and it's just in a way that no one, normal people, don't have that reserve. He had a just an absolutely bottomless well of it. Uh, his kindness was just effortless and, you know. Uh, two weeks ago, he and I were on the roof and he was, we have to fix the roof a lot. Um, we were on the roof and he loves fixing the roof. And, uh, and he was talking about how, oh, you know, maybe uh, semester ends and he graduates. Oh, you know, what kind of job is he gonna take? Where is he gonna go? Can he stay in New Haven? And I remembered thinking, at the time, my biggest fear was that he would move away, and that's how I'd lose him. And, and this is so much worse. Um, I have so much more written down. <laughs> um, he was living a really good life, and he was really finding a home here, and home with us, with you guys. And I... Uh, you know, I think the best that we can do now is to keep his memory alive and try harder to be like Martin, um, try harder to be more open and more caring and more giving and welcoming and think about each other more often. You know, he knew everything about everyone and he was a great listener, and he just, he could really, you would be talking, he'd say, oh, so-and-so's go, yeah, they have this, they're the same thing, you know, oh, yeah, you should talk to them about it, oh, their project, this thing, that thing, this bike, that bike, and, uh, you know, he was just there for everybody. Um, yeah. 
Um, he would have thanked every person who's here right now, personally. And, uh, and I can't, because there's too many of you. But uh, he would be sending you texts for weeks telling you how much he appreciated you being here. And I appreciate you being here. That's it. <laughs> There's more, but I can't. <laughs> it's just pure chaos. Um, <laughs> thank you. Before I open the floor to the Flores family, is there anyone else that would like to share a memory? All right, and now we will ask the Flores family. Thank you all for being with us together today for Martin de Jesus Flores. I'm Joanna, I'm Martin's older sister, which means that he's my baby brother. But I, I've spent the last week here in New Haven, I've gotten to learn that he was a bit of a little brother to everyone. Not that he was immature, if anything, people twice his age were telling me that even they could look up to him. But more in the sense that we all had so much endearment for him. He was so playful and loving and smiling. Please remember him as you walk across campus and his smile. Remember him when you graduate together as chargers. Remember him at your new jobs in the summer. Re remember him on your bike rides and at New Haven coffee shops. Remember him and every dog that you pet, and please tell them they're all good dogs. He would want that. I'd like to read from Martin's favorite movie character, Lightning McQueen from Cars, which he knew, he knew this one by, by memory. Okay, here we go. Focus, speed. I am speed. One winner, 42 losers. I eat losers for breakfast. Breakfast? Maybe I should have had breakfast. Brecky could be good for me. No, 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 no. Focus. Speed. Faster than fast. Quicker than quick. I am lightning. Ka-chow. Martin, we love you. Last Saturday, I went to the memorial for Martin at the Bradley Bike Co-op. And Mrs. Flores, one thing you said to us was, never forget Martin. And so the University of New Haven community never want to forget both students. And so we have a, we want to leave you all with a poem. Never forget that I will ask Steve and Dorothy to come up to help me. When in the morning's misty hour, when the sun beams gently o'er each flower, when thou dost cease to smile benign, 
and think each heart responds with thine. When seeking rest among divine, forget me not. When the last rays of twilight fall, and thou art pacing yonder hall, when mists are gathering on the hill, nor sound is heard save mountain rill, when all around bids peace be still, forget me not. When the first star with brilliance bright gleams lonely o'er the arch of night, when the bright moon dispels the gloom and various are the stars that bloom and brighten at the, as the sun at noon, forget me not. When solemn sighs the hollow wind, and deep in thought enwraps the mind, if e'er thou dost in mournful tone, e'er sigh because thou feel alone, or wrapped in melancholy prone, forget me not. When bird does wait thy absence long, nor tend unto its morning song, while thou art searching stoic page, or listening to an ancient sage whose spirit curbs a mournful rage, forget me not. Then when in silence thou dost walk, nor being round with whom to talk, when thou art on the mighty deep and do in quiet action sleep, if we no more on earth do meet, forget me not. When brightness round the long shall bloom, and knelt remembering those in gloom, and when in deep oblivion's shade, this breathless moldering form is laid, and thy terrestrial body stayed, forget me not. Should sorrow cloud thy coming years, and bathe thy happiness in tears, remember, though we doom to part, the lives one found fond and faithful heart that will forget thee not. Thank you everyone for coming.